Hey, yo, your friendly neighborhood quarter guy here, and uh, before going to my main topic for the day, I'm gonna add a couple milestones to my Patreon account. If my total contributions reach $250 a month, I will do a cure review on Mega Man X7. Considering how much I hate that game, there's gonna be a lot of salt if I do that review. And if my contributions reach $500 a month or more, I will do a one-shot Let's Play of Hong Kong 97. Yeah, yeah, you can expect a lot of reactions in, in that one if I do it. Now, for both of these stretch goals, the, the contribution levels have to stand until the end of the given month. Anyways, considering I'm such a big fan of Castlevania, well, yeah, here's my shirt right here. You can tell right there. I was excited to hear about longtime series veteran Koji Igarashi's Kickstarter project for its spiritual successor, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I've been meaning to talk about it for some time, but I just haven't found the right opportunity. But I gotta say, it looks pretty awesome. I mean, I am a big fan of Igarashi's style, the, uh, exploration, platforming, hack-and-slash games with RPG elements that was established with Symphony of the Night. I really am a big fan of that style of game, and I am glad to see Igarashi putting the, uh, well, wanting to put the effort into a new game of that style. Goodness knows Konami won't even touch it. That's why Igarashi left it, by the looks of it. Oh, Konami... But yeah, the Kickstarter has been a has been it's been an incredible success. I mean, it's been smashing goal after goal after goal. It's almost at three million dollars in total contributions, and it seems to be a pattern I'm seeing lately. I mean, it's like first money number nine being Mega Man spiritual successor, ukulele for Banjo Kazooie, and now Bloodstained. It's quite interesting how. Pioneers of series are leaving big-name publishers who aren't touching their IPs anymore to basically do what the publishers wouldn't. At this rate, it may be indie developers who become the vanguards of the industry instead of the big AAA publishers who seem to be changing for what gamers see to be the worse. It's encouraging and rather depressing at the same time. Which brings me to my question of the week. Which series do you think will get the next spiritual successor to be announced on Kickstarter? And just with last week, I'll take your answers in the comments and I'll post my favorite responses in next week's video. Here are last week's winners. And with that, time for the fourth wall mailbag. Remember, if you want to send me a question, go to my channel page, click the About tab, and click Send Message, and if I like the question and I have a good answer for it, I'll answer it in the next episode. Today's first question comes from Bubbles is Hot 46853 who asks, Aside from yourself, who is your favorite Let's Player? For one thing, I'm not my favorite Let's Player anyway, I'm primarily a countdown maker. But, of my favorite Let's Players, there are two that really stand out to me. The first one, of course, is Chugga Conroy. Mainly for all the memorable lines he seems to have, like about Steve the Red Pikmin, his uh, recap of a previous episode of the Super Mario Sunshine LP, the It Doesn't Affect Mistrevious Count, and, most recently, or Melia. The second would be Markiplier. Mainly because his reactions can be <laughs> pretty hilarious. If you've seen his random horror reaction compilations, you'd probably understand. <laughs> I'm not sure if he, I'm not sure if it's him or if he just hands it up on purpose, but either way it's entertaining. Next question comes from Isaac Coco, who asks. Have you ever played Final Fantasy VIII before? 
Yes, I have, and to be honest, it's really meh. Squall was an extremely bland protagonist, not very emotional. The draw system was annoying. And the story messed with time travel in ways that really didn't work. It is far from the best Final Fantasy out there, I'm afraid. Next question, Willie Antonio asks, What are your thoughts on the direction Konami has taken? Jeez. I really don't like it. I miss the old Konami that was putting out awesome game after awesome game. Stuff like Castlevania, Gradius, I miss those days. But nowadays, after having bought out Hudson and practically doing nothing with their IPs, driving out, pretty much driving out Iga and Kojima, canceling Silent Hills to the chagrin of many gamers, and pretty much trying to erase any evidence of its existence. Let me put it to you this way. Cancel Silent Hills. Then announce a new Yu-Gi-Oh game for the current gen consoles. Freaking what? I don't know. 13 Hearts asks, With Capcom wanting to make more HD remasters, are there any games you would like to see get remastered? Well, aside from the Disney games, like Chip and Dale and Dark Darkwing Duck, I'd like to see them remaster the Beautiful Joe games. Those games were totally silly, totally ridiculous, totally over the top, and I loved them for it. They pretty much poked fun at pretty much every movie genre imaginable, and the fact that you were able to use movie powers to fight just made it a lot more fun. And who knows, maybe if enough interest is in is had in those games, we may finally get that third actual installment we've been waiting for for so long. Well, I've been waiting for for so long, I can't speak for the rest of you guys. But that's what I would love to see. Jonathan Kimmel asks, Did you ever talk to your landlord about birds getting into your apartment? I did, but they didn't believe me. Oh.